What do Falcons do? Rise up! Welcome to Rise of Reaction, the show we talk all things Falcons, NFL, Georgia sports, and in general the sports news of the day. I'm your host, Dr. Lee Denning, the Golden Heart Doc and a lifelong sports fan, coming back to you today to do our Week 9 NFL picks. Now, last week I did pretty well overall. I ended up going 12 and 4 on the week. Uh, my best prediction was obviously the Kansas City Chiefs losing to the Denver Broncos. Um, I fell into the same traps as a lot of other people around the league. Um, the other one that I was hoping would do well, but ended up not just because I like Tom Grassi. I had hoped that they would do well against Minnesota. They did not, uh, but Minnesota ended up getting hit by the Brandon Perna curse wheel, which if you have not seen that, watch any of the That's Good Sports Power Rankings. The curse wheel is real. It is alive. It is deadly. It is real. I also picked the Falcons to beat up on Will Levis. That did not end up happening. However, there are some changes that have happened that have come out today. I'm going to probably make a short where I briefly give my thoughts on uh, the move to Taylor Heineke uh, from Desmond Ritter, at least for this week. And we'll go from there. But currently sitting at 74 and 48 on the season. Puts me at the 87.3 percentile. And again, 12 and 4 last week, which is basically the exact opposite where I went like 4 and 13 the week prior. So glad to have a, um, a, a better way. You're not 4 and 13, but 4 and 11, whatever it ended up being. Um, anyways, we're coming back. And obviously, I'm going to have my picking partner, Susie, today. She is going to be with me, helping me pick some of these teams for week nine. Now we're going to start with Thursday night football. Now you have the Will Levis led uh, Tennessee Titans. Will Levis coming in, throwing four touchdowns, looking like an all pro in his debut, uh, going to Pittsburgh and playing the Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, who are not playing particularly good offense in the first three quarters, but are playing solid defense all four and are finding ways to win late in games. And I think that's honestly still going to be the story here. I still see the Pittsburgh Steelers ultimately winning this game. The Falcons had a hiccup against the Titans, but I think the Steelers have a slightly better defense than we do, and I think their offense with Kenny Pickett, with somebody who's been there for two years now, is going to find a way to win. He's got Deontay Johnson back. He's got uh, George Pickens. Uh, they are still missing Pat Freermuth, but they have Najee Harris, who's looked pretty decent at times. And I think this is probably going to be a get-right game for Najee Harris. So give me the Pittsburgh Steelers to go 5-3 and three at the end of Thursday night. Then we move on to the final NFL overseas game of the year with the Miami Dolphins at the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, Miami Dolphins, again, they are one of the most prolific offenses in the NFL. Their defense leaves a little bit to be desired, but they're still doing a lot right, and they're doing a lot to win games. Mike McDaniels has this team going on all or firing on all cylinders right now. Kansas City Chiefs? Well, you just lost to the Denver Broncos, and you haven't particularly played super well. Now, Patrick Mahomes did have the flu. I didn't know that when I made my pick, and I don't think anybody knew that when I made my pick. But still, the Denver Broncos made you guys look silly. Um, this is a pseudo-home game for the Chiefs. It's in Germany, and they are the home team. But it's again, it's just going to be an amalgamation of NFL fans, so this is like a neutral, as neutral of a stadium and as neutral of a game as you're going to get. I personally believe that the Miami Dolphins are going to have a bigger impact. I think they have a better offense this year. Even though Patrick Mahomes is still great, I do think that the Miami Dolphins have a better offense. Defensively, Kansas City Chiefs are better. I don't know what to think here. I really want to say the Miami Dolphins are going to win, so give me the Miami Dolphins here. Then we open up with the 1 o'clock games with the Minnesota Vikings at the Atlanta Falcons. Now, we do know that even though Josh Dobbs just got traded to the Minnesota Vikings, he will not be starting. Justin Jefferson, this is his final week on IR. He will be coming off of IR after this week. So you have Jordan Addison, who's going to be leading the team at wide receiver um, with, I don't even know this guy's name, Jaron Hall, I think is his name, that they're going to be playing like a, a random rookie who really doesn't have a lot of uh, hype around him. Now, again, I don't want us to look past this. Because this is a game that I circled early in the year and said, this is going to be one of our tougher challenges. That was when they still had Kirk Cousins, and that was when they still had Justin Jefferson. If I want to be very clear. The Falcons, I have them picked to win this game, and so does America. If we can't beat a completely and totally beat up Minnesota Vikings team, that is not particularly great on defense. They're okay. They're middle of the road. They're okay on defense. They should not be good on offense. 
Their running game is terrible. Alexander Madison has not been anything like he was when he was the backup for uh, Dalvin Cook. If we can't beat this team, it's a bad year. It's it's about we're about to revert. We are at the four and four spot that we were at last year, but we've done it in a more convincing fashion. But it's going to be bad. If we go four and five at the end of this one, it's going to be really bad. Taylor Heineke is going to be starting for the Falcons. I do ultimately think that's a little bit better for a win now mentality, but it does give me a little bit of sadness for our future. I think knowing what we were trying to do with Desmond Ritter and kind of hoping that we still can maybe. But again, I'll put out a short a little bit later talking about that. Give me the Falcons here. And then we have the full-blown tank mode Arizona Cardinals trading away their quarterback, and they do have Kyler Murray back, going up against the Cleveland Browns in Cleveland. I'm pretty sure that's why they moved on from Josh Dobbs, because they do have a healthy Kyler Murray. I'm not sure if he's going to be playing. I'm not sure it really matters, though, because the Cleveland Browns have probably the best defense in the NFL, even though, again, they gave up a lot of points to the Indianapolis Colts. They still have Miles Garrett, who is playing like the NFL Defensive Player of the Year, and because of that, I'm going to go with the Cleveland Browns. I think this is going to be a very low-scoring affair. But in Cleveland, give me the Browns. Jerome Ford should be healthy. Uh, Marty Cooper should be healthy. P.J. Walker may be starting and maybe Deshaun Watson. I don't really care. I'd rather see P.J. Walker succeed, quite frankly. But many of you who have followed me for a while know how I feel about Deshaun Watson. Uh, Mr. Can't keep his hands to himself. But anyways, that's neither here nor there. Give me the Cleveland Browns here begrudgingly. Then we move on to the L.A. Rams at the Green Bay Packers. Green Bay Packers are sellers at the deadline. Both of these teams are five-loss teams. Uh, but the Rams have looked better doing it. You do have a better offensive potential with the Rams right now than you do with the Green Bay Packers. Uh, losing Rasul Douglas at the trade deadline um, to the Buffalo Bills. Not ideal for the Packers for hope this season. They are starting to look more like the team I thought they were going to be after starting strong. They're now looking like that. I, I, I think I predicted them most likely their floor to be about five wins, and they're starting to look like that team. Um, so they're going to be a team that's better in the future, but they got to get their act together. Give me the Rams here. I just like them overall. I think Puka Nakua is a great story. you got Cooper Cup. Um, they're still going to be without their uh, running back this week, and Kyron Williams, not sure how Zach Evans is going to fit in there. Uh, not sure who really is going to be running the rock all that well. Daryl Henderson was he's been moved back and forth to the practice squad, so we'll see what happens. Then, but I am going to go with the Rams. Then we go to another one o'clock matchup. We have the Washington Commies at the New England Patriots. Now, I will go ahead and give you guys a a, a little update here. I made my picks prior to the trade deadline, and I have subsequently rethought that. Um, with the Washington Commies losing both of their supreme, or not supreme, both of their really good edge rushers, uh, Montez Sweat to the Bears, and then Chase Young to the 49ers, I just really feel like their defense is going to be suspect. And the New England Patriots, I know that they're going to have a solid defense overall. Bill Belichick is not going to have this team looking bad from a defensive standpoint. You're talking about a team that has played well against talent so far this year. They did just lose to the Miami Dolphins, but, you know, again, beat the Buffalo Bills. I think the New England Patriots at home against a diminished Washington team that's very obviously looking towards the future, I think the New England Patriots find a way to win and, and get to 3-6 and six at home. Washington Commies find themselves uh, tied at the bottom of the – NFC East this week, uh, and because the tiebreakers will be at the bottom of the NFC East this week, because I will go ahead and give you a heads up, I have the Giants winning later on, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Then we have the Chicago Bears and New Orleans Saints. Chicago Bears are still a bad team. I, I don't care. That's it. New Orleans Saints, it, I begrudgingly pick you, but it's in New Orleans. These people show up hard for their games, and I just... Again, it looks like Newton, the Saints finally found their offensive footing. Scares me going into the into the month of November where we have to play them at the end towards the Thanksgiving period. Um, but, yeah, give me the New Orleans Saints here. They're going to stay tied with the Falcons for number one in the division. Uh, then we have the Seattle Seahawks 5-2 and two at the Baltimore Ravens. Probably going to be one of the better games of the week. It is in Baltimore. The Seattle Seahawks have a very good offense. Their defense is pretty middle of the road. Baltimore Ravens, I would say similar things. Their offense depends on Lamar Jackson. He didn't look particularly great this last week, but they still found a way to win. Um, Gus Edwards looked good this past week. Uh, Baltimore Ravens are finding ways, creative ways to win in spite of being hurt and in spite of 
uh, lacking production when it looks like they should have a lot of production. Seattle Seahawks are a little banged up, and again, I think their overall offense is better in terms of skill position, but I'm ultimately going to pick the Baltimore Ravens here, so give me the Ravens. Then we move into another 1 o'clock matchup, the last time, Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Houston Texans. Um, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I still don't think they're a very good team. I still don't have any faith in Baker Mayfield. They came out firing on all cylinders, and now they're moving backwards exactly like I thought they would. Houston Texans had a tough loss against the Carolina Panthers this past week where they pretty much dominated most of the game then lost late in it. I still have faith in the Houston Texans that they are going to be competitive this year and that they're going to continue to build off of this success going into the years to come for the AFC South. Give me the Houston Texans at home as the underdog pick here. And then we have the Indianapolis Colts, 4 o'clock game at the Carolina Panthers. Carolina getting their first win. They did not go 0-7. They did, they're did. they not going to be the first winless team in the, in the 17-game era. Um, Indianapolis Colts playing above their station, but still not finding ways to win. Their defense is quite suspect. But you don't have to have a particularly great defense when you're playing the Carolina Panthers. I'm just being real honest right now. In the future, that could change. But right now, Gardner Minshew and Jonathan Taylor and Pittman and all the weapons that they've got on offense should find a way to beat the Carolina Panthers, even though it's at home. Give me the Indianapolis Colts. Carolina Panthers will keep it close, but I do think the Indianapolis Colts ultimately win this one. Then we go to the New York Giants at the Las Vegas Raiders. Now, again, before the trade deadline and before Tuesday night, had the Raiders picked in this one because it's in Las Vegas. They are beating up on teams that are generally bad, but they just lost their head coach and they lost their general manager in the middle, not even to the midpoint of the season. So with that in mind, I have zero faith that they are going to be able to put together a cohesive game plan. They'll probably surprise me and they'll probably win this game. But I believe the New York Giants, even though they're a bad team, even though they're not good, are going to find a way to beat the Las Vegas Raiders, who have now lost their coach and their general manager. That's just my thought. Given the New York Giants, they stay or they they move from the bottom to third place in their division. And then we go to what probably should be the prime uh, or has a not should be the prime time game, but had a chance to be a prime time game in the Dallas Cowboys at the Philadelphia Eagles. Dallas is a tale of two teams, and I've got no idea which one's going to show up. They are either firing on all cylinders and doing really well, or they are just shitting the bed in every way possible, and Dak turns into a turnover machine. Philadelphia Eagles have one hiccup and have otherwise looked like a pretty good team overall. Um, they were very dominant this last week, with that, and it's in Philadelphia. I'm going to go ahead and probably plan, unless something happens for the Eagles at Cowboys later in the season, I'm probably going to split these guys and say that each one gets a win at home. Because of that, because it's at home, and really for no other good reason, because I do think these teams are going to be fairly evenly matched, I'm going to pick the Philadelphia Eagles. I also do have a friend that works with my wife who is an Eagles fan, so I'll, I'll give him this nod. And it's the Philadelphia Bulldogs anyway, so you know, if i got to pick a team... Give me the Eagles. they got enough of the guys that I have watched for the last couple of years on the Georgia National Championship squads to fall in love with them and to be able to cheer for them for their success. So, yeah, give me the Philadelphia Eagles. Then we move into prime time Sunday night, the Buffalo Bills at the Cincinnati Bengals. Bengals coming off of a four-game win streak with, again, this is another one of my good ones from last week. I picked the Bengals over the 49ers. It was under 25% when I made that pick. We're picking the Bengals. I am telling you, they have found their footing. They figured out what was wrong. You now have Joe Burrow, who's healthy. They have found out what is wrong. And the Buffalo Bills are just barely finding ways to win. I have zero faith in the Buffalo Bills right now. Even making good trades at the deadline, I just don't have faith in them. I think the Buffalo Bills are going to come out of this being 5-4 and four and are going to be in panic mode. I think the Cincinnati Bengals are a better team right now just in terms of cohesion. I don't know if the defense is better. I think you have a better offense in Cincinnati and a, and a better defense in Buffalo. But, again, I, I don't know who's going to show up here. I, I don't know if the Buffalo Bills – if the Buffalo Bills play up to their full potential, they should win this game. 
I don't think they're going to do that. They're not doing it right now. Something is wrong with the Buffalo Bills. I don't know what it is, but something has looked wrong with them since their butt whooping of Miami um, earlier this season. I don't know what it is, but they got to get right. But this week I'm going to pick Cincinnati Bengals. Then we have the Monday night primetime game. The LA Chargers looking to get to 500 against the slightly over 500 New York Jets, 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 Jets. Now again, Jets are looking good predominantly because of Brees Hall's ability to make plays, because Garrett Wilson is a special talent, not because Zach Wilson is a particularly good quarterback. Their defense is also top five in the league. With that in mind, the Chargers have a middle-of-the-road defense, and when they're firing on all cylinders, have one of the better offenses in the league. I just really feel like the Chargers are still somewhat in a panic mode. They did win this last week pretty convincingly. But I still feel like they are, we got to win mode. Absolutely have to win to stay alive. Jets have done better than I thought they would so far without Aaron Rodgers. If Aaron Rodgers was playing this game, I would probably give it to the Jets. But because he's not, because he's hurt, because I have more faith in the offense of the Chargers, I am ultimately going to pick the LA Chargers to win this game. Also, you've got Josh Harris bringing the channel on that show. I would love to have Josh on sometime. He and I have talked about doing that in the past, but then I, I just ran out of time, and uh, we couldn't ever coordinate anything. It's hard to do that on the uh, when we're on the opposite coast. But really good guy, long snapper for the um, for the Chargers. Former, I think, nine-year veteran for the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, walked on from Auburn. Just, again, a really stand-up guy. Went to school with him. And um, just, again, appreciate uh, the fact that he you know, supports the channel or at least um, you know, has given me you know, – talk to me about uh, football from an NFL perspective over the last few years. Um, but thank you guys for watching, liking, sharing, and subscribing. The goal is still trying to get to 500 by the end of the season. I'll go ahead and tell you, I'm not on pace to do that. I would like to get on pace to do that. Uh, any subscriptions that you're willing to drop down on me, they, they help. It doesn't cost you a single thing, and it helps me reach more people, helps me get more content out. But thank you guys to those of you who have. I've got 187 of you so far. It means the world to me. Um, that's all I got for you today. I'm feeling much better, and hopefully these picks work out. But as always, rise up.